Welcome back to the Bear Down Podcast on NCAA Football 14, guys, where it's all about everything Arkansas A&M. And man, you talk about a frustrating end to a week. Our Black Bears, sitting at number one for a majority of the season, are now the number two team in the nation. We'll talk about that and plus a lot more, uh, like looking at our possible matchup in the Big 12 Championship, going over season stats, recruiting, and of course, everybody's favorite segment, the five top plays of the week. So make sure you guys go ahead and smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. So the latest BCS rankings are out and the voters have Auburn as the number one team in the nation. They just beat Ole Miss, a ranked squad, number 11 in the nation, and they have uh, Bama coming up this week. Uh, You know, I understand that, you know, they are playing a lot more ranked teams than we are. And honestly, they're not. They just beat a ranked team last week, but they're not as dominant as we've been all season. So this one, I'm going to take that back. I don't understand how this happened. Um, You know, looking at their schedule, yeah, that's not even a – there's maybe, what, two win, three win teams, three winning record teams. Uh, They just beat Ole Miss. They're 8-3. and If you look at our schedule, I mean, we've beat a ranked Washington, a ranked Notre Dame, TCU is ranked, Texas is ranked. You know, this system is flawed, man. And that's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, And I feel bad for the Jayhawks. This team, when they play angry, they put up a lot of points, and they don't give up a lot of points. So the Jayhawks are next on the chopping block. But here's the rest of but here's a look at the rest of the top 25, according to the BCS. Notre Dame is in at three. You got Fresno State in at four. Washington is five. Michigan, six. Florida State is seven. San Diego State jumps up three spots to eight. Tennessee is nine. And then you got Penn State rounding out the top 10. Ole Miss falls three spots after losing to Auburn. Then you've got Ohio State creeping back up the polls. Uh, Wisconsin, Texas, and Clemson at, in at 15. Uh, Indiana falls seven spots to 16. And you got South Alabama at 17. Uh, Alabama in at 18. Oklahoma is 19. Pittsburgh creeps into the top 25. They're at 20. Then you got Miami at 21. Navy, TCU, Florida falls 14 spots after losing to Georgia Tech. And then you've got Stanford rounding out your top 25. Time to take a look at some stats, man. Gabe Perez, big year so far. 3,676 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Been very turnover prone here in the past couple weeks, but he has a chance to go over 4,000 yards passing. Uh, I could see him maybe hitting even 4,500 yards passing. Uh, We've got three games left on our schedule. Uh, We've got the Kansas game, the Big 12 championship, and then our bowl game. So um, there's a chance he could hit 4,500 yards by the end of this season. To the ground we go. Philip Fagan finally turning up, man. 221 carries, 1,462 yards, 25 touchdowns for the junior. Uh, he's just been playing better the past couple games, man. Uh, you know, he's really carrying the load for this run game. And you got Ira with 103 carries for 717 yards, 13 touchdowns. Three games left in his senior year. Can we get him to 1,000 yards rushing? Uh, Anthony Bryant has 83 yards and seven touchdowns. Mike Warren, 53 yards in the score. Uh, save for Gabe Perez, 53 yards and three touchdowns. And then you got Tony Mitchell, the backup quarterback, 52 yards and a score. Out wide, we got Trey Morgan over 1,000 yards and double-digit touchdowns. 70 catches for 1,012 yards and 11 scores. You got Tariq with 39 for 854 and five scores. Now, can we get him to 1,000 yards receiving? Three games? I think we could do that, man. Ashton Ryan, 38 grabs for 654 and four scores. You got Fred Foreman, 30 catches, 516 and three scores. Mike Warren, uh, 17 for 193 and three touchdowns. Ira out of the backfield, 13 for 122. Uh, DT, 12 for 181 and two scores. Then you got Fagan, six for 50. Alexander has five for 100 and a touchdown. To the defense side of the ball, we go Brian Jones. Welcome to Rare Company, my guy. 103 tackles on the season, 29 TFLs, and he has seven sacks. Uh, You talk about having a breakout senior season. Uh, He is raising his draft stock, uh, and we've got a lot of interest from NFL teams about Brian. 
So uh, it's a good thing, man. I'm, I'm excited to see his future uh, and what he can do when he gets to the next level. Uh, Nick Ginn, second on the team with 57 tackles. Bill Jennings has 53. Then you got David Sims, who's having a great couple games, man. 46 tackles, 10 TFLs on the season. Brian Charles, uh, the big defensive end, 35 tackles, 15 TFLs. Uh, you got Casey Buchanan with 33. Uh, Dustin Carey has 32. Bo McGee with 28. Same for Matt Scott. You got Char or Corey Bentley with 26. Uh, Dylan Gross with 25. Uh, ben Bowen has 20. Garrett Anderson, the big D tackle with 16. Caleb Walker with 13 tackles. And Bryson Williams has six. Jumping into the QB pressure department, Brian Charles breaks into double digit sacks. He has 11 so far on the season. Brian Jones with seven. Then you've got Garrett Anderson with five. Dylan Gross also has five. Caleb Walker with four. Bentley has three. Then you got McGee and Sims each with two. Then Wilson, Hester, and Williams and Bowen each have one. <laughs> and in the interception department, Bill Jennings just having a breakout senior year. Six interceptions on the year. Matt Scott with three. Brian Jones has two. And you've got Ginn, Sims, McGee, and Coco each with one. Now, guys, I can't even front. This is a little disappointing. We don't have a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Uh, Powers is doing a great job. He's got 1,234 yards uh, returning. Uh, averaging 28 yards of return, but no touchdowns, no touchdowns. Now, the question is, if we put Tariq back at starting kickoff returner, do we get a return touchdown? I don't want to risk it. Uh, I'm enjoying having Tariq play the slot. He's such a dangerous weapon as a receiver. I don't want him to uh, use up all his energy just being a return man. Uh, he does return punts for us, and he doesn't have one here. 425 yards. He's averaging 17 yards a return. Um I feel like this Kansas game, we have to just go all out. And I think we might be able to get one. So taking a look at your NCAA leaders, look at Gabe Perez. Number one in the quarterback passing yards list with 3,676 yards uh, on the ground. Philip Fagan creeps into the top five, man. He was like 20th a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's about 200 yards behind the number one back right now, which is more, more from Arizona. Out wide, Trey Morgan, top 10, almost, top 11. Uh, he's creeping back up that list, breaking into 1,000 yards. Uh, I think we could get him to like 1,300 by the end of the season. Tacklers, you already know, Brian Jones, Nick Ginn, Bill Jennings, David Sims, your top four. Sack department, Brian Charles takes over the lead there with his 11 sacks. Interception department, Bill Jennings tied for first uh, with a handful of other corners. Here I look at your kicking leaders. Vandy's kicker, Childress, has a 56-yarder to his name. That's impressive. So let's take a look at the Big 12 standings as of today. Uh, if the Big 12 championship was to start today, it would be our Black Bears taking on Oklahoma. And the way it's looking, that's going to be the matchup. Um, you know, we've dominated. We're undefeated in conference. They have one loss. And I think that was to us, right? Did we beat Oklahoma? Did we play Oklahoma already? No, we did not play Oklahoma this year. Their one loss in conference is Iowa State. You got Arkansas there, five and three in conference, five and seven overall. TCU seven and three, four and three in conference. Iowa State came out hot, had a great start to the season, um, but they're eight and three, four and three in conference. Texas, same thing, eight and three, four and three in conference. And you got Baylor four and seven overall, three and four in conference. A State, man. They're having a tough time. Uh, five and six, three and five in conference. Texas Tech is two and nine, two and five inside the conference. OK State, five and five, two and five in the conference. K State, three and eight, two and five in the conference. And then Kansas bringing up the rear, two, uh, two and nine, and they're one and six inside the conference. But let's go back to the top, man. This should be an interesting game for us. The Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, 91 overall, 97 offense, 87 defense. We can expose them on defense. Uh, Fletcher having a great year, 2,300 yards, 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He threw for five touchdowns his last game. Wow. Uh, they got a thousand yard back in Walker, almost a thousand yard receiver in Hardy. Uh, defensively, Hunter has six sacks and Overstreet has three interceptions. Um, you know, we're going to be looking to go. Uh, what is it? Four for four? Yeah, four for four in the Big 12 this year. Uh, 
We've won the we've won the conference championship every year that we've been in the Big 12, and we're looking to keep that going this year. Uh, we just got to stay focused, man. Taking a look at the race for the Heisman, you got Philip Fagan, the number one guy in the group right now. Uh, he had a solid game last week versus K State, 133 yards and three touchdowns. Then you've got Paul Thompson, the senior quarterback from Fresno State. Uh, he had 175 yards and five total touchdowns against Boise. Uh, they got Bobby Dean, the running back from Tennessee. He had 164 yards and two scores versus Vandy. Uh, Jamal Williams at San Diego State. Uh, they held New Mexico scoreless. He had 266 through the air, four total touchdowns. And then you've got Lee Peterson, the running back from Penn State. 100 yards, two scores, and three catches for 43 yards. Uh, I would love for Phil to get through Heisman this year. I think he's doing a great job, especially in the second half of the season. Put up some great numbers, and he's actually leading this team. Uh, he's put this team on his back, and he's carried us to victories. So the award finalists have been named for the Maxwell Award. Jamal Williams, the quarterback from San Diego State, is number one. And you got Fagan and uh, Lance Stroop. Uh, then at the Walter Camp, Philip Fagan leading the way. Uh, the Bednarik, Brian Jones, Bill Jennings on the list, Nick Ginn, Brian Charles, and Matt Scott all in your top ten. Uh, the Nagurski, Brian Jones is there, and then Brian Charles is in at eight. Uh, the O'Brien Award, Jamal Williams, uh, the quarterback from San Diego State is one, and he got Gay Perez in at two. The Dope Walker Award, Phil Fagan number one on the board. The Bolitnikoff, Chad Williams from Ole Miss is number one. Then you've got uh, Jason Christensen from Auburn, Stephen Daniels from South Carolina, uh, George Cooper from Georgia, or yeah, is that Georgia State? No, Southern Alabama. Yeah, Southern Alabama. Uh, and then you got Trey Morgan in at five. The Mackey, uh, Paul Wright from Marshall is number one. You got Ashton Ryan in at four as a true freshman. The Lombardi Award, Brian Charles is number one. And you've got Dylan Gross in at four, and Caleb Walker is five. The Butkus, Brian Jones is there, uh, number one on the list. The Thorpe Award, you've got Bill Jennings, number one. Nick Ginn is three, and Matt Scott is five. The Ray Guy Award for the best punter, Jacob Williamson, our punter. Uh, he is in at number two. Returner of the year, Antonio Brown from uh, Notre Dame is one, and you got Marquise Powers in at two. So here are just a few players of the week that we need to say congratulations to, man. Uh, in week 10, David Sims had a big day against LSU. Nine tackles, a TFL, and a sack. He was named the Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, in week 11 versus Texas, you've got Phillip Fagan, 27 carries, 226, three scores. Uh, he was named Offensive Player of the Week. Week 12, you got Brian Charles against Iowa State. Five tackles, four TFLs, four sacks, and a forced fumble. Uh, he was your Defensive Player of the Week in the Big 12. And then week 13, Gay Perez against Kansas State, 20 of 31, 380, uh, have five total touchdowns. He was named Offensive Player of the Week in the Big 12. All right, guys, it's time for our favorite part of this podcast, a look back at some of the big plays that happened this past week. Here is your top five plays of the week coming in at number five. First to 10, we go four wide, trips to the right, Morgan split out to the left. Gabe going to the air. Rolls out to the right. Oh, <laughs> Trey Morgan, one-handed for 18. It looked like he gave up on his route. And look at the grab. Just, <laughs> he just snagged it with one hand. That's a bad man. Number four. All right, third and 14. They stay four wide. Watch the screen. No screen. Slants. We're here. We're here, Brian Jones. We're here, baby. We are here. Let's go. Let's go, defense. Way to sniff it out, B. Jones. Yes, sir. Here's number three. Third and 15, three wide. Screen again. That's you, Sims. That's you, Sims. That's you, David. Turn and go, baby. We're housing this one. Let's go, David Sims. Stop trying to run that screen on us. Touchdown, Bears. Woo! Pick. And number two. All right, first and 10, four wide. Come on, offense. Gabe going to the air. Loads up, goes deep. Gabe has a step. Oh, <laughs> what a diving grab, Tariq Larson. 56 yards. 
Look at the throw. Beautiful throw, and Tariq goes full extension to make the catch. And your top play from this past week. All right, second and two. We go trips to the left. Harrison the gun with Perez. Watch the blitz coming. Here they come. Perez loads up. Throws it up for Ashton Ryan, and he makes the grab. Touchdown, Bears. What a catch by the true freshman. Woo, what a grab. What a catch. <laughs> Listen, man, I enjoy that segment so much, bro. Just being able to go back and look at some of the plays and the craziness that happens in these games. If you guys ever see something, man, make sure you timestamp it down in the comments section and make sure you put play of the week next to it. All right. Time to hit this recruiting trail, man. We've got a lot of prospects coming in uh, on senior day this week. As we take on Kansas, we start things off with B.J. Holland, uh, the athlete. Brandon Bain, another athlete. You got Jay Bracken and then Brandon Campbell, a cornerback. Um, we'll take a look at these guys right now, man. We've got a nice lead going for Donnell Swan, uh, the strong safety for Minnesota. We're leading over Florida and Minnesota. B.J. Holland from Alaska, six foot, 194, four-star prospect. Uh, this guy is a true athlete, man. He can play all over the field. Great speed, 93 speed. Uh, I like his man coverage. I like his zone coverage. He can also play wide receiver, can play running back and quarterback. Uh, I can see him playing maybe the free safety role with that 85 zone coverage. Uh, the tackling would have to be a little bit better, but that's something we could work on. Our lead is growing for Brandon Bain, the big athlete from New Jersey, 6'2", 225, four-star prospect. And this kid is just a straight up running back. He is a running back. 91 speed, 91 agility, 87 acceleration. Uh, he has a little zone coverage, 77 zone coverage, uh, but he is a back, he deserves to be in the backfield. 87 elusiveness, uh, 84 stiff farm, 78 carry, 80 trucking. You know, we're gonna have a loaded backfield going into next season. Uh, I think it's about four or five running backs that are gonna be eligible to play. Um, so Brandon Bain could be uh, somebody we put the red shirt on. Here's Brandon Campbell from right here in Arkansas, 6'1", 179, three-star prospect at corner. Uh, we've got the lead over the Hogs, Baylor, and Iowa, and then there's Middle Tennessee State there. Uh, this kid is more of a project, uh, 92 speed, 89 agility, 84 acceleration. Uh, the coverage ability is pretty solid. Uh, but, you know, we could bring him into the program, give him a red shirt, let him sit behind a couple of guys. Uh, I think he could be a, a solid player for us in the future. Then you've got Jay Bracken, the uh, Juco sophomore at tackle 6'6", 285. And as you can see, some big name schools were looking to get him. Texas, Michigan, uh, Army, Florida State. But he has chosen to come to Arkansas A&M, man. We have a huge lead right now. Uh, he is a solid blocker across the board. 81 pass block, 81 run block, uh, 84 impact block. We're going to have an interesting situation on our offensive line going into the next season. We're losing our right tackle. We can do some moving around, uh, but I really am concerned about our left tackle position. Uh, Bracket could come in and push for playing time next year. And you've got Blake Hardy, uh, outside linebacker that we just added to the board from South Carolina, 6'5", 242, a three-star prospect. Now, I'm thinking with him, we could move him down to uh, defensive end and allow him to be a terror. 83 speed, he's got great tackling ability, great hit power, great play wreck. Uh, the power moves are there, the finesse move is there, uh, and he's got solid block shedding. I like the size of 6'5", 242. If we're able to sign him and bring him in, I say moving to a defensive end, we get that three-man pass rush that I like to do a lot. He could be a valuable uh, pickup for this team. Now it's time to take a look at the top classes Michigan, the Wolverines have the number one recruiting class so far, 17 prospects. They have three five stars and eight four stars. Clemson climbing up the charts with the second best recruiting class. Uh, they've got 17 prospects, one five star, five four stars, and three or 11 three stars. Uh, then, there are, then, are, then there's our Black Bears uh, with 11 prospects, two five stars, six four stars, and three three stars. Notre Dame is four with 15 prospects. And you got Auburn, LSU, Penn State, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Nebraska. That's crazy, man. Where's Bama at? Georgia's in at 12. You got Texas at 15. Northwestern is 18. 
Alabama, 25. They only have eight prospects signed, and they're four four stars and three four stars. Four four stars and four three stars. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other big names down here? Uh, there's Oklahoma in at 35. They've got 12 prospects, one four star and 11 three stars. Where's Ohio State? There's Ohio State at 58. Wow. That's crazy, man. Seven prospects, two four stars, and five three stars. The mighty have fallen, guys. So we are at the end of the regular season, fellas. One game left, and it's Kansas. They're two and nine on the season. Uh, we've got this game, we've got the Big 12 championship, and then we've got our bowl game. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, our Black Bears are upset. They feel like they should still be the number one team in the nation. Uh, they feel slighted. And when they play upset, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So look for a lot of points to be put up against the Jayhawks. Look for the defense to be pinning their ear back, their ears back, and causing havoc. This should be a blowout game. This should be a blowout game, and then we just get focused for the Big 12 championship. We can't look too far ahead. We just got to come out and do what we do best and handle business. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. And make sure you guys hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG. And come through and join the Discord fan for exclusive content. And next week, we sit down with Coach Thomas before the Big 12 Championship. So get ready for that one, man. That should be a good one. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace. Big thank you to all the members of the channel and the Patreons. If you would like to become a member or a Patreon, hit the links down below in my description.